Hi, I'm Nathan with MSOE RI3D. Today we're going to be talking about the Andy Mark Primer in a Box. So we received this as a part of our Robot in 3 Days deal with Andy Mark, as using this as an aspect of our robot to help make it a little bit more competitive. Now, we were able to fully assemble this climber and put it on our final robot here, and we were able to pull out some of the good, the bads, and some potential improvements as well that we would give to Andy Mark if actually using this. Um, so first up, the overall build and the pros that we see with this device here. So the climber in the box is pretty well priced for teams that are looking to be moderately to very competitive and are looking for a climbing solution that allows them to be very competitive in any game. Uh, this design here works very well by having these brackets on the top of each stage with some constant force springs that allow you to actually extend the stages down and pull them back up with a string in the center that will allow it to retract. Now, we were able and lucky enough to put this on our robot to give us a more competitive edge for our robot, allowing us to try and get to the second level rung. In this case, when we were assembling this, we found that all of the parts were very high quality, and overall, it provided for a very structurally sound climber. In this case, even when we only have mounting on the bottom, the actual play in the climber itself is very minimal, which allows our robot to be very sturdy when competing, as well as makes it really easy to line up with this as we want. Uh, one of the things as well we have here is we have the two-stage climber, as shown here. Uh, this climber itself is very flexible and very easy to adapt to different situations. Likewise, if you didn't want to use this top stage, you could actually just adapt it to be a two-stage climber instead of a, or a one-stage climber instead of a two-stage climber. Uh, with this, it allows for many different games and different potentials for use for this climber, allowing you to use it in different situations and on different robots independent of this year's game. One of the things we also found very beneficial with this climber is its adaptability. Using pretty standard parts and pieces, it'd be very easy to extend this to make the climber longer if you wanted, or combine it into different configurations specifically tailored for the robot you're building. In this case, we found that just using some very nice brackets like this, you could adapt them to any position on the climber you wanted if you had a specific space box you were working inside of. You could cut down the tubes, readapt these plates, and even customize this hook if you needed to work for your custom robot solution. Now, we also found it was nice in this case that you could just rotate the hook around by re-drilling the holes onto a different face like we did here. Uh, we were able to try out different orientations really fast without actually rebuilding the climber, which was very excellent. Likewise, in the brackets itself, we have these plastic sliders inside of here that provide for a very smooth surface when we're running it down. Uh, we have very little resistance when we're trying to move this up and down by hand. Of course, the only thing in there is the constant force springs. Uh, but we're able to get very good performance out of this and have little to no errors when we're actually trying to move it. So overall, for a team that's looking to get and you know, start being a little bit more competitive, the Animark Climber in a Box is an excellent solution for this. It's very easy to adapt to your robot. It has a very small space profile. As you can see on the base here, we were actually able to fit this into a tiny part of our robot, which, you know, weighing the differences between the volume and potential points you can score, this definitely has a lot of benefits for a team looking to score a lot of points very fast. It can adapt to many different robot designs and overall is very well built. In this case, many of the parts are high quality and we can see these lasting multiple tournaments. Even through a lot of our vigorous testing, we have seen minimal wear on a lot of these parts, and it does allow for the design itself to be very sturdy and easily used on robots. Now to some of the negatives that we saw. In this case, uh, the climber in the box was a little bit hard to assemble. Specifically in our case, we didn't actually get instructions right away, so we had to try and figure out some things ourselves, which lended to there being a lot of different problems when we were trying to put it together. So some of the problems we faced is confusion about where to drill the holes here. Because the stock is shipped without holes explicitly being on there, we had to drill all of the holes ourselves, which led to some confusion when we were figuring out which holes were needed and which ones weren't. Likewise, with the instructions as well, we found it a little bit hard to get through some of the steps, and we've had some teams in the area struggle when assembling this climber just because of the assembly process. While it's not easy to make something of this quality, especially with how compact these brackets are, we think providing some additional resources such as videos of assembly and in-depth guides on how to assemble these stages could be very beneficial. 
We've had some teams that have accidentally drilled the holes wrong and had to rotate it on a different axis, which is another positive as well, being as flexible as it is. You can easily just redrill on different surfaces. But uh, teams had some issues assembling these because they were a little bit confused by the guides and weren't sure which face to mount things on or where to drill holes. Uh, one of the other problems we had here is when we were going through, uh, we had some issues with the actual gearbox. So on the bottom uh, right now we have a red line inside of one of the Andy Mark Sport gearboxes that was provided with the climber. And we found that this was actually not powerful enough to get our robot directly up on a climb. Well, if you had two of these, we believe it'd be very feasible to climb with your robot. We found that just using one red line with our sport gearbox in the provided configuration, it was not actually powerful enough to get our robot completely off the ground. Now, of course, there are some caveats to this. As you may have noticed, our climber is mounted in the corner of our robot which is very subprime when you're trying to optimize how your robot climbs. In this case, when our robot would hook onto the bar, the entire assembly would cantilever to get the center of gravity underneath our hook point, which ended up pre providing a bunch of torque on this lifter as well. We did see overall when we were trying to climb that the actual climber hung up very well when we were providing this much torque on it, essentially cantilevering our entire robot off of it but we weren't actually able to get off the ground, partly due to the climber configuration and partly due to the gearbox we had. Uh, we didn't have enough time to try a stronger gearbox, but we believe if we added something a bit stronger down there, we would be able to get off the ground. Now with this, one of the improvements we recommend as well is including some information, especially for rookie teams, about how to set up a climber. While it's definitely feasible to use a single climbing arm as some teams did in 2020, it may not be ideal. For us, we tried to put it in the corner as that was the main room that we had and we wanted to throw something together quickly. But we did find that since it was cantilevering the whole robot, it was pretty hard to actually make it work. In this case, including some basic tutorials and information about how the center of gravity works when a robot is climbing and considerations to you know consider when you're actually going through mounting your climber, such as keeping it centered on your robot or potentially using two of them, could make this very beneficial and help some rookie teams when they're trying to pick something. Um, in our case, just having one climber didn't work ideally, but if we would have had two, we likely would have been able to climb much easier. Uh, one of the improvements as well that we were looking at here was potentially adding a ratcheting mechanism on the gearbox here. In this case, we did notice that even though our robot wasn't able to get all the way up, it could get mostly off the ground. However, as soon as we released power, as you would see at the end of the match, the robot instantly fell as it wasn't able to hold itself up. This could be remedied by adding some sort of ratcheting mechanism down here on the gearbox making it so that the climber held its position at the end of the match. Now, this could either be done by having some sort of uh, like ratcheting wrench on the outside was something that we considered just to stop the spool when it went, um, but adding something in there that would actually stop this from spinning once it reaches the end of the match would be very beneficial and something that you could easily tell teams as well. Um, as for safety considerations, something else that we thought would have been nice is some sort of prefabricated cover for the gearbox. Well, we don't have the actual spool down on the bottom here that comes with the kit. Uh, having some sort of cover that would go over the spool to prevent people from sticking their hands in there, especially when working around the robot, would be very beneficial. We were able to get away with a cardboard cover when we originally did this, but including something in there for new teams may be helpful as well. Now. We have some considerations as well for the actual gearbox on the bottom, as well as some mounting issues. Uh, when we started trying to integrate this to our robot, as you can see here, we do have a bit of play inside of the arm. While we tried to do some basic mounting from the outside of this tube onto some of the neighboring brackets, it's an important consideration knowing that you cannot drew through this without hitting where this middle stage traverses. Adding in something there, just a guide to help teams mount this could be helpful as well, uh, just to make sure that no team is going to drill through their stages and damage their climber. Um, in the end, we did end up screwing in the bottom, which gave us a pretty good solution, but uh, with some of the mounting solutions that are out there, just advertising and showing examples of how to mount this could really help teams who are struggling with this. Likewise, with the climber on the bottom, uh, we did have some issues with that as well. Uh, one of the biggest ones we had here was looking at the spool direction of our spool. In this case, whether the string wraps around the top of the spool or the bottom of the spool will kind of affect where the string goes and can change where your climber starts out. Um, just including some information on you know, how you want to wrap your string around that could be helpful as well, 
just to make sure it doesn't wrap on any of the holes you make as well. Um, in our case, we were able to center the hole so we didn't see many problems there, but um, if any of the teams had issues where, you know, wrapping the string over the top of the spool caused it to rub on the hole, uh, it may be helpful to include something with that as well, just so teams know that that's going to change depending on which way you spin it. Um, one of the other things we had as well was specifically pertaining to the rope. Now this climber works by adding a string that's tied to this top stage that gets pulled down as the motor spins, allowing it to all collapse down. In some of our early testing, we actually weren't able to tie the knot tight enough, and the entire climber ended up shooting up as the knot became untied. Now, this did spend a lot of time as we had to disassemble the climber just to retie the knot. So including some sort of warning in there telling teams that their top knot should be really tight just to make sure this doesn't happen would definitely help teams in the long run, especially if this were to happen in competition where teams would have to scramble to disconnect and remove all of these pieces just to go through and tie that. Now, with this, we do have some intention or like some potential improvements that we'd recommend for Andy Mark. In this case, one of the big ones we had recommended was the ratcheting mechanism at the bottom. While you may get a lot of rookie teams that are looking for a simple solution to climb, we have seen a lot of teams in the area that are looking at using one or two of these to hold their robots up. One of the biggest things you could do here is just add a simple ratcheting mechanism on the bottom to prevent this from backfeeding as it gets to the end of the match. Either, in this case, using some sort of worm gear or non-backdrivable mechanism, or adding a simple ratcheting mechanism to the other side of the gearbox. In this case, we were looking at adding just like a simple ratcheting wrench to the outside to make sure that it wouldn't spin, uh, but our output shaft wasn't long enough and we didn't have time to implement that. Likewise, some of the other improvements we had were mainly focused on the actual instructions around this, including some sort of videos on how to assemble this climber, such as those and supplementary material by Robot in Three Days teams could be very beneficial. Including some sort of video, especially around these brackets, would really help as we even struggled for a couple hours at the beginning trying to get this together, and including some guides on doing so would definitely help. Uh, with this as well, including some information about potential mounting, we feel would really help some teams. Many teams that we've seen in the area haven't worked with climbers before, so helping them understand the basics of center of gravity and how your robot works when it's lifting itself up could be very beneficial in teams' designs. Not directly with this, but very much helping them consider how to integrate this product into the robot without having any negative feedback where you know they try and integrate it into a design that a climber like this just doesn't work. Um, instead, teaching them the basics so the climber can, you know, actually shine where it's used. Uh, one of the other areas with that as well, as you can see, like on the slides here, we actually did get some wear down for these plastic spacers. That's primarily because of our mounting location here. As you can see, being in the back right of the robot, when the climber goes up, this arm gets torqued back as the center of gravity tries to get located underneath the robot, which then applies excessive force between our spacers and the metal surfaces here which did end on these pieces wearing down. Um, in this case, we could have added some lubricant here just to help it slide as well, um, referencing teams and having them try that out could definitely be a beneficial option just to make sure that they don't experience anything negative with their climbers. But we think including some instructions on that could be very beneficial. Um, with that though, we overall really enjoyed the product. It was pretty quick to build. We were able to get it done pretty fast in our robot in three days adventure here and it was able to be implemented in the robot really quick. Uh, with the improvements that we recommended here, we think that this would be a very strong product for any rookie to new or even experienced teams that are looking to climb. We see a lot of potential in a design like this, especially with the small form factor we have. And as mentioned before, keeping these parts really easy to source makes it easy for teams to customize on this and improve it in the future. So we're really looking forward to see what teams can do with this design. Overall, we've really enjoyed it and we've recommended it to many teams in the area, uh, but we're looking to see how teams use it and hopefully we can see the best out of it using this Robot in 3 Days robot as well as other teams in the competition. Ready.
Ready. Ready? Do I full send it? I guess. Ah, turns like the idea ratio is not quite right. <laughs> or something slid out. Let's try that again. You're holding the control at another angle. Does it not go further? Nope, I've been holding it long enough. Yeah, so try it one last time. I'm holding it down.